continue with the second presentation, Africa Biz, Geonode Business Portal for uh, Drone Mapping in Africa by Justin uh, Saunders. Thank you. Uh, welcome, everybody. Good afternoon. Um, I'd just firstly like to say that uh, Africa Bees was set up um, after FOS 2018 in Tanzania. We were sitting around talking, having a few drinks, and out of that we decided that we could set up a company that could use open source technology to uh, create a community within Africa and to enable uh, local pilots to fly, and, and this is why I'm presenting today. Oh, I've got that horrible. Let me just change this. Uh, apparently, it's a font thing. So let me. Yeah, let me do a control. Hold on a second. Sorry about this. Um, let's try this one. Oh no, same thing. Okay. Uh, let me just do a control A. So we did test this beforehand. Um, I could probably go through it without without the without the sl slides. Let's just control A. Okay, let's try this. Uh, if need be, uh, it's a lot of it actually is graphical anyway, so we can we can get on with that. Okay, so basically, um, Africa Bees was was uh, set up um, using drone technology. The advantages of drone technology is that we can quickly capture information, we can capture accurate information, and the whole process is actually very scalable. You can purchase a drone now, today, for as little as two thousand dollars. And that drone is capable of doing some very high resolution mapping at three to five centimeters, as an example. So the whole thing is now scalable, and we can empower the local citizens to use the drone technology, and the barrier to entry is quite low. So that gives us a whole scalable platform that we can roll out multiple drone pilots in, in this case in Africa, that can capture the data and then we can use the data in, in, in all GIS and uh, other applications. And I'll show you that. We can generate very quick results. The data is all automated. We've got autonomous flying. We've got uploading data with, 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 with overlap. And then we can run programs, whether they're commercial or whether they're open, that can actually do the, the processing. Uh, it's much safer to fly a drone. We can go to mining sites, we can go to inaccessible areas that previously were quite dangerous for surveyors to go to. So actually we have a very good uh, sa safety record. And because it's autonomous, we're actually programming the drone to fly at a certain height. And at that height in particular, there are less, um, less uh, things to bump into. And because people are not flying it manually, we have much less accidents. And uh, considerably lower costs, as I, as I explained. As you can recognize, this is from the GeoNode interface. We've got a multiple of sectors, from construction, infrastructure, building dams, uh, humanitarian, agriculture, lots and lots of applications. So we can immediately use the GeoNode and uh, the capability to separate out data into different sectors. So this is the construction sector. You can see with a drone, we can pick up features incredibly detailed. We're down to three to five centimeter, uh, generally if we're flying at about 120 meters. So with these drones, we can collect about three square kilometers a day with a single drone. So that's a $2,000 drone collecting three square kilometers in a day. We scale that up to 50 drones and we're up to a lot, a lot more data. Here's the mining sector, again, a very interested, in, very interested commercial sector that are prepared to pay us to fly. So we have a local pilot, the local pilot captures the data, we push it up to the, the cloud, we process the data, and we can deliver, deliver mapping. Here we have urban areas, so you can see the distinction between 
quite poor areas here and quite rich areas here. And we can pick up lots of information. And with this information, we're not only just picking up the author photo or the, the color, we're actually picking up 3D building heights and 3D, 3D models. So you'll see, you'll see that. Agriculture. With agriculture, we can put on different sensors. So we can use a bit of the infrared. And then also with agriculture, we can see for early warning and for, for, for mapping out uh, farms. Farm. Traditionally, if you do this with a standard GPS, with a surveyor, what we can do in 20 minutes would take you two months. And you wouldn't have as much information because you wouldn't have where every single tree is or where every object is. Here we have uh, basically flooding, um, you know, generally disaster areas, and we can also measure infrastructure like dams. So we can see what is downstream of a dam, and then we can make arrangements to make sure that the people downstream are, are safe. Humanitarian, the picture up here is, uh, this is an Ebola camp in Freetown. Again, the UN were there, so we can pick up features. There's a school on the left, a uh, hospital down, down below. So we can pick up these, these features very detailed, very accurately, and we can map them very quickly. So what do we do? Well, we've set up the whole thing on a geonode. The reason we wanted to use geonode was because it's actually got the whole built-in community. People can sign into GeoNode, they can join it, the pilots can join uh, the, the, the website, join, and the pilots can then start talking with each other and sharing information. So it's an open community of pilots. Okay? The other thing, we've got all the spatial tools that you've heard about the technical side of it before this presentation. So what we do is we basically plan the flights, we've captured the data, we process the data, we review the data and then we deliver and we share the data. So again, it's just a matter of, of, of using these tools that are available. And we can bring the data directly into QGIS and directly into other, other, other things. And we use all the, the, web serving, the web serving stuff out of uh, Geonode. So these are the products that are really the most important ones. We get an aerial photo, author photo, so you can see nice clear things. You can see uh, wells and houses and things like that. We get this uh, elevation models with the, both the digital surface model and the DTM. Uh, and from that, we can generate some very nice profiles. And um, we're looking at things like automatic feature extraction. So we can extract the buildings into very much more simpler ortho orthographic uh, uh, data sets that we could bring into AutoCAD or into the engineering packages. We can create the old traditional maps, which is what a lot of people like to have traditionally and of course contour lines people still using contour lines <laughs> we've got to progress them onto using 3d modeling and and all the values and profiles we can do that and then you get a lot of this excellent information from point cloud from point cloud we can even see the eaves of the underneath the building because we're actually not flying in in plan we can fly with oblique as well and the combination gives us underneath features and also th th uh, the 3D transects. So these are our sort of feature data sets. We've used the, uh, the grouping uh, facility within uh, GeoNode to put every country down as a separate group. It's great. You can go in there, you can see who's flying in Ghana, who's flying in Malawi. You can see in there, these are the users who are flying in, in, in Malawi. Uh, this guy, Julian. He did an expedition in uh, Mount Miko in um, Mozambique. It's an area that's never been discovered. Nobody's been up to the top of it before. He flew the drone up there, and, and they've identified some of the species that are absolutely new and, and, and never, never seen before. So we've got a combination of people who do different things. And what we're doing is we can get uh, an African drone pilot or get a, a pilot residing out there in the rural areas, and they can fly the data and produce maps. They might not originally have thought that their drone was for mapping. They might do weddings on a weekend. They might fly the drone for cinematography, tourism, all those sorts of things. But we can get them now with a simple application to capture mapping. They can earn extra income. We can process the data up in the cloud, and we can generate these kind of things for people. And we want to do this all before regulation. 
That's why we chose Africa. We've worked there a lot. Malawi is not a problem. We fly in Malawi. We can do wherever we like as quickly as we can. Because when they regulate, we're going to go back to the government. We're going to say, look what we did without regulation. It was safe. We captured, captured this data. We can use it for planning, for, for infrastructure, for all of these reasons. And can we fly again, please? Okay, so again, our community can, can, can do that. Here are just the data sets that you see. So there are data sets available, aerial LIDAR surveys. There are image-based things that we did in Sierra Leone. And then you can see there the detailed elevation data. So again, we're just using the functionality for of, of Geonode. And it's great because it means we can set different security levels, who can access this data, clients can come in and, and not. And some of are using data that's open, that might be free, because the World Bank or the EU might have paid for it. Others might want to come in on a commercial basis. So we're mixing a bit, we're mixing it up between open and commercial. So what do we do? Our mission is to empower local pilots. This is the whole thing. If we can scale these pilots and have 50 pilots in a particular country, we can do a city in a weekend. Okay? We're not at that stage yet. We're a startup. But we can see the attraction of drones. We see the community of drones. So we can actually get these guys in there. And they can get some revenue. Sustainable. We're getting them to do it. Okay? Bees, okay, drones are compared with bees. So what happens? The bees, they go, they fly, they collect raw material, okay? Our drones collect raw material, okay? We transform process, download, upload into the hive or into uh, Geonode, <laughs> okay? So essentially, we provide the platform, okay? With the drone imagery, we can create all these layers. And we can use Open Drone Map. We can use Pix4D. We can use Agisoft, Soft there's, or Drone Deploy. I mean, there's lots and lots of ones out there. But as with QGIS, when QGIS went to 1.6, 1.8, suddenly, boom, after 2.0, it just escalated in terms of the usability, the functionality, and off we went. I think Open Drone Map is getting to that stage. So at the moment, we can process the data in open. But unfortunately, some instances when we've got specific to clients, we might have to go to a proprietary right now. But we're looking at, at, the, at that. So you get your author photo, your point cloud, and you, your information. OK, and then what we do is we share it, we sell it, we do what we need to, OK, to keep it going. Right, so this just shows an example. We do a flight path, and we can collect elevation and and uh, author, author data. So here's the data. You can see it's really detailed. There's no DTM that you can get off a satellite that'll look anything like this. OK? OK, so what we do is there's the data. There's the point cloud, OK? For every single point, we have the elevation. We have the color of the pixel. We can do marvelous things with point cloud. Um, and even and with in particular with some open software and then we can draw profile across it so what we do is we suddenly have got the engineering side of it we've got the profile we can actually come in and start to do some stuff that people really want uh, very effectively so in this case let's do an engineering there's the thing we can calculate volume okay so again we're taking something a 20 minute flight and we're producing incredible, incredible value from it. And it's all geo-referenced, of course. OK? So what I can do now, I believe, is I should be able to play a video. There we go. OK, so again, this is point cloud. So what we can do is we can have a look at the site. We get incredible amount of information from the site. It's been safe to fly. We've got resolutions of five centimeters, three to five centimeters, because of the height we chose to fly at. And it means that we can essentially do that. Uh, OK, uh, let's go to the next one. OK, this is pretty neat. OK. Here, this is in Sierra Leone. OK, this is a tank. You can see I'm actually looking underneath the tank. They're breaking up aggregate to build the road. So you can see, you can see that, essentially, uh, that 
we can pick up a huge amount of information. You can see the uh, the car we were in. You can see uh, power lines. You can see a lot of information. So again, really incredible information that's been been. Uh, Okay, so let me move to the next one. I'm very near the end. This was a, a school. So you can see the information. We can see the classroom. We can see ramps going up to the classroom for disability. We can see where the water supply is in relation to the toilets. We don't want to have the, the uh, essentially, we don't want to have the toilets above the water supply because when the flood comes, it just contaminates the whole school. So again, for, for master planning or for anything else, we can, use, we can use the drone data. Okay, next one, last one. Again, we can represent this data. Let's just go to the next one. We can represent this data in many ways. Okay, so here again, this shows you the, the elevations, okay? So what we're looking for next is we're looking for developers or we're looking for the community to run algorithms on this kind of data to, to actually pick out that house, pick out that object in 3D. Then we can use it in AutoCAD and all these horrible engineering packages that are not necessarily open source. But it means that we can actually take out uh, an, an, an object from that. Okay, so next one. Okay, so essentially, just to sort of cut a long story short, we're, we're, we're using Geonode. We, had, we had adopted Geono uh, Geonode. I was a former administrator of Geonode for the Malawi Spatial Portal, MASDAP. So I've got very, I'm very familiar. I'm not a programmer at all, but I can administrate and I can see the benefits of using a, a system. So again, Geonode and all the components that come within Geonode. And again, I think they're making great waves in terms of the progress. We essentially are one of their testers, okay? <laughs> so we do feedback information back to the developers to, to get the best out of it. You can plug in directly to QGIS. Our data can come straight off our servers into QGIS, okay? In Geonode, we can go to the World Food Program uh, Geonode and share data from theirs. We can, they can sh look at our data, we can look at their data. Okay, through these these couplings that they've done, um, and again we're using uh, we're using more and more the the open drone map because we feel that you know open source source is is going somewhere. What I'd like to do in terms of a commercial model is I'd like to pay on a flight by flight basis money into a development fund. Okay, ten dollars every flight. If we pay ten dollars for every flight, we do thousands and thousands of flights that money could be reutilized within, within the open source community. So, so um, that's it. Um, I think I'm on time, pretty much, 19 minutes. Are there any questions? Uh, great presentation, thank you. And now uh, five minutes for uh, questions. Okay. Hello. Um, I see that uh, from your flights you get a, a lot of data. And the question actually is uh, how well educated are your clients? How much of your data are they using? And if you feel that you have a lot of data and you have clients, or maybe part of them, or maybe most of them, don't use all the data that you uh, come up with. Uh, do you have a plan or, or a strategy to educate your users? Essentially, we've got two kinds of users. One is the people who where it's open and freely available. So in terms of it's been paid for by a client like the World Bank or the EU. And those clients, basically, when it goes open, we will start to deal with huge data sets and some will become more obsolete than others. So you've, you've, you've identified a, an issue, a problem that we might have. The other client is mo mostly pr private or government that wanted to be specifically within their area. 
So we set security within the GeoNode for people to visualize, visualize their data sets. So with, with those data sets, what we're currently doing, because we've, we've just started the company, is that we put up the area of interest of what's available in Africa. And then we serve the data back into the clients in many different ways using o o open source uh, technology. So we are going to come to a problem where we have lots and lots of, of data. Um, and there are some services out there where other people in the uh, open source community can manage that for us. I'm, I'm waiting for that. When we get to that stage, I'll be very happy. Any other questions? We're using, we're use, essentially, we're using, other, we're using other programs um, uh, that, that allow us to uh, allow us to do that currently. Um, the guys from Cortoza have told me that there is going to be a point cloud uh, application that we can use with it. So again, it, 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 a good question. We we we're using things like Cloud Compare and and and. and other programs to generate the 3D visualization. Again, sometimes that all that often resides with the client as we're delivering the data. So there be, will certainly be some stuff that's open that we'll have to look at how we're going to serve it. And there's other stuff where our client has the tools to use it. Okay, this is not a question, but okay, it's not a question, but just a request here. Yeah, it's not a question, but a request. Okay, can you come in as an aid organization? Because in Africa, there is problems with the regulations. Because in Kenya, just two months ago, the parliament refused to endorse the drone regulations. So they were citing privacy and safety issues. Yeah, so we can't talk about scalability when there are so many countries in Africa that the drone companies like the flying labs in all over Africa are not working. Yeah, so can you come in as an aid organization? Yeah. Okay. I yes, I can, I can elaborate on that. Um, most African countries to date actually don't have the regulations. It's the ones who are advancing much quicker, like Kenya. And we know Kenya has regulations. Uh, we try to work with the local drone companies in Kenya so that our local guys there have the right regulations, have the right criteria. So we're working with them to generate extra additional funding. We tried going in with the World Bank in Kenya because they had that dam which broke, killed 47 people. We wanted to go in there and do a drone survey immediately to identify what were the key problems with that? And we even, we had difficulty. If we're coming in with the World Bank or the European Union or whoever, we tend to immediately have face issues with the government. They either want a project out of it, they want something out of it, okay? <laughs> Having worked in Africa a while. So what we try to do is we try to, we always do it legally. So as long as there's an, a, a legal approach um, that we can have a local pilot, or many local pilots, who are there doing it legally, we will do it legally. Sometimes they might confiscate your... I've had many drones confiscated at the airports, and I get them back when I leave. But actually, when you get in the country, there's no legal requirement to take it off you at the airport. And once I get fixed up with the the uh, roads department or the government agency that I'm flying with, it's not a problem. So again, let's hope that this regulation will be, will be but Africa Bees was set up to get in there before regulation, safely. Yes, just a quick question. If you have to prioritize your need in this moment as a company startup, 
Would you prioritize the need of a skill in terms of uh, information retrieval so people which are able to, given a certain data, to extract some additional information on top of that to be displayed? Or in terms of people who go there and collect the data? A uh, very good question. Um, I would say that our priority at the moment is to go out there and capture the data. Because there's a lack of data for development projects on that continent. Well, there is around everywhere because everything is changing dynamically. So the idea is really we want to capture as much as we can because the, post -pro the processing can take place later. If we've got an image of Nairobi, for example, at five centimeter resolution, if they bring in restrictions after that, then we've got the data in NERD and we can then use it to promote, to open up or to actually use the data uh, in, in that role. So that's our first priority. However, we do spend a lot of time digitizing manually buildings, trees, roads, infrastructure. And I think that you guys out there who are doing this artificial intelligence machine learning, you're doing it all on satellite imagery. Come down to the drone data. Drone data is much more accurate. We've got three dimensions. So it's not even machine learning to take off a block because we know a roof is orthogonal. We know a building is a particular, particular shape and we know where it sits on the ground. Okay. Thank you, Justin. We'll come back in five minutes with the last uh, presentation.